Okay, so we, we, we're now standing in the Lear National Ocean Test Facility, and this is Ireland's main facility for, for testing marine structures at scale. So, so in this tank, or in this, this facility, we test marine renewable energy devices, offshore wind technologies, you know, ships, we test coastal protection st structures, any, any device or structure that you can build at, at scale, we can test it here. So what, what, what I'm standing in front of at the moment is what's called the deep ocean basin. And this is our, our, our main test tank, and it's the test tank that technology is testing prior to going offshore. So in, in this tank, we, we, can t we can generate waves which are in excess of one meter in height, you know, sort of, so we can test structures at scales of maybe one is to 15 to one is to 30. So they're pretty, pretty big structures. When we're testing, we, 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 we measure the loading on the structure, the motion of the structure, and the power production if it's a, it's a wave energy device. Okay, so what we're looking at now is testing that we're doing on a two-dimensional section of a revetment structure that is being used for coastal protection. Okay, so what we're testing is that there's a, an innovative concrete armor unit that we initially developed here in UCC, but is being used commercially now, you know, so to protect sections of coastline around Ireland, you know. So what we're testing is looking at the behavior of these units from their extreme waves and also the overtopping of the structure. So how much water is going over the top of the structure? So when, when you think of um, the future and sea level rise, many structures that are designed now may not be able to, to cope with future water levels and the overtopping. So we're looking at the impacts of, of rising sea levels on overtopping on structures in, in terms of what impacts it'll have on, on say pedestrian cars, roads, buildings, etc. Okay, so we're, we're standing in front of the, the ocean basin now. So the, the previous tank we saw was, was called the deep ocean basin and that could generate waves over a meter. This tank is a different style tank. It's designed to test technologies when they're at an earlier stage of development. So it can generate waves maybe up to 0.3 of a meter. But the, the main benefit from this tank, and you can see it from behind me here, is that it has a, a curved wave generation system. So we have paddles, 84 paddles, extending across two sides of the tank, and along the other two sides of the tank, we have, we have beaches. So it's a fully absorbing tank. It doesn't reflect waves, you know, sort of into the, where the model will be, and thus it's a very good way of testing technologies which, which are at very small scale. So we test scales of one is to 50 to one is to 100 in this tank. So this is the last tank in, in, in the Lear facility and what it can do is it can generate both waves and currents. So particularly when we're testing tidal energy technologies, we, we, we put them into this tank and we, we, we can test for, for flow only and for, for flow with wave conditions. So many tidal sites in, in, in the ocean are, are in locations where there are strong wave conditions and these affect the operation of the tidal energy devices. So we, we put them in this tank and we can run both waves and currents together and look at the impact that has on the loading on the blades and on the performance of, of the turbine itself. So the tank works by, by water being driven in a vertical manner. So there's a false floor on the tank. The, the flow is driven under the floor. It comes up here at the end and it runs back down the tank into our test area. So it does a circulation in this manner around the tank and we can generate flows of over a meter per second in, in here.